Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of North Light Images. In this video, I'm going to have a look at some aspects of paper choices for making prints. Now, the example I've got here is for black and white, but this applies equally well to colour. Um, I've got the Epson P5300 under these prints here. Um, I've got it here for a while longer for doing some testing. I've got some spare inks now so I can run off a load more prints. I will return to this subject for colour images as well for this printer and other printers. But what is it that made me wonder about making, choosing papers. Well, I'm lucky enough, because I do this testing, to have lots of different papers about. And when I get an image, uh, a question I'm often asked is, how do you know which paper to print it on? Well, the quick answer is, you don't. It's experience, but it's also personal choice. And one of the things here, if you don't like my choices of paper for this, that is great. I would rather you not like my choices and therefore have a choice of your own than go, well, they all look pretty much of a muchness. You want to actually have, you know, ideally for large prints, I feel they should have some emotional connection with the audience, uh, with yourself as well. Now, what's the image I was testing here. I've got a roll of an Epson paper in here. This is Epson, um, it is, let me just read it to make sure, cold press natural. Now there's a whole series of these papers. This is a cotton rag paper. The fact it says cold press means it has a slight surface texture. Now in general I prefer smoother papers but this one's fine. I've got this one in for some other specific testing purposes as well but I want to see what it looked like. I've printed this image which is uh, De Montfort University near here. This is a black and white conversion of a color image. Now I've printed this using Epson ABW mode. Uh, I've used Epson print layout from Photoshop. You could drive it directly or anything. That's neither here nor there. It just was an easy way of producing it. I've set a custom 17 inch page size. I've got 17 inch roll paper. I've got a square image. So it's come out fairly even. It would need a bit of a trim because remember when you're using roll paper sometimes you do, depending on settings, you do get slightly longer bits of paper at the leading and trailing edge. Uh, if you want precise cutting, you're going to have to have a read of the manual to make sure that you've got everything set correctly for that because it does try and do lots of other things for you as well sometimes. So occasionally in producing a better quality at one edge, it may give you a larger margin. But anyway, that's other stuff. But what about the print? It was a colour image. It's a nighttime image. I've converted it to black and white. Now I've used a simple channel mixer for this uh, and I've got the tonality to an air way I'm, I'm happy with. I've actually cropped the picture down a bit because it's a very big picture, but I've cropped it down a bit to concentrate more on the central element of the picture. Now, if I look at the picture, I've got a sky not long after sunset. So we've got uh, crescent moons here. Um, I've made sure the sky is a little bit darker than it is in the colour picture. In the colour print, this is a lovely deep blue and the colours are very strong. But I just wanted to do a black and white here to emphasise the structure, the texture, um, the actual shape of the building, which I feel is a quite often represented rather more in black and white. Now, industrial clients and architectural photography clients that I have don't necessarily tend to agree with that. They rarely ever commission work in black and white. Sometimes they'll see a black and white print that I've made and will go, oh, that's nice. Can we have a copy of it for our boardroom or something like that? And I will happily sell them a print, probably bigger than this. But I've cropped this down to a square frame that I'm quite happy with the composition and I've gone to print it. What considerations have I had in, in sort of preparing the image? Well, basically I made sure that the, there was detail in the whites because there is detail inside the building here. I want black, black, some black blacks in it, but I want a good range of tonality. Now I've printed it on an, a, a rag paper here. I know that the, um, the contrast of it and the depth of the blacks isn't going to be as great as if I printed it on a gloss paper. For architectural images, for newer structures, I tend to 
go for a slightly more contrasty paper. So that could go for a brighter. And I've got lots of examples. I'm going to show these, some of these examples in a moment. But this is the thoughts regarding this particular picture here. I might go for a more brighter style paper. I might go for a bit more punch in it. But I wanted to see whether this one worked. Now, I know that if I go for a gloss paper, and he's, I've got lots of samples of these. Now, there's a shot taken. You can see the gloss reflecting off it there. Uh, there's uh, St. Mary de Castro Church before its spire was demolished. I've been up inside this spire um, as part of the attempts to save it. But... Uh, uh, well, only taking photographs, I should say. But uh, I've been up there and I've been up the scaffolding when it was dismantled as well. But it was a very impressive spire. This is just near Leicester Castle. Um, it's a very old church. The spire dates from about 1420 or something like that. 1410, 1420. I'm not sure exactly when. But the church itself is older. It goes back quite a bit. Back to Saxon times, I believe, parts of it. But anyway, got this. That is just too bright and contrasty. Now, it was actually an HDR image, and I do use HDR for black and white when I'm doing night shots, so I can capture the tonal range of buildings that are floodlit, because otherwise you end up, if you want detail, you end up with burnt out bits where the flood lighting is. If you use an HDR technique, you can actually then convert it to black and white, and it doesn't look like HDR, it just looks like a well-lit building. So that to me is far too glossy. Um, yes, it's crisp, it's sharp. I know some people might like it, but that is my example of being too, you know, too sharp. Why have I got so many examples here? Well, I was doing a talk the other night for um, a local camera club, and I do uh, talks, a few talks a year for camera clubs and the like here in the UK. And uh, I was talking about printing, and I took loads and loads of prints with me so I could show different examples. And I know from talking to people and the questions they asked, a lot of people were interested in the differences between paper because I appreciate I'm lucky in having loads and loads of papers. I can just you know, churn out prints and go, oh yes, I printed these 10 prints on 10 different papers. Which one do I like the best? Oh, that one. Um, <laughs> It's, you know, I appreciate that most people will not have vast stocks of papers and be able to do this. So whilst I may not name specific brands of paper or specific types, the, the, in general, what I'll say is this is a glossy photo paper. This would great, look great with some colour photos on it, but the black and white is just a bit too harsh. Let's pop that one down. One I took recently, this was taken with uh, GFX 100S. This is on also a lightly textured paper, not the same paper as this, the texture is slightly different to this one here. Uh, this was printed on the Epson P5000 upstairs, very similar printer. But with this, I like the, the natural look of it, of the tree here, the old tree. Um, I like the fact that it is not too bright and contrasty. So for this particular image, I would go for a cotton rag paper, probably a natural white. And remember, you can get two in these papers. Quite often you can get a bright white and a natural white. The natural white just doesn't have any optical brightness in. Now, you may have a thing against optical brightness for archival purposes. That's a different matter. But here, this is a natural white paper. It doesn't have any brightness in it. It gives a nice soft feel to the picture. So once again, if I printed this on the glossy paper, that, I, that previous picture of the church, I think it would just be too sharp and punchy. Um, but then that's just my taste. Remember too that you're seeing this obviously on a video, so the tonality is somewhat suspect. And also, even to my eyesight, this print looks different now. I've got the lighting on here for the video and some lighting here in, I'm, I'm doing this down in our kitchen, but the print looks different under this lighting. So just when you do a print on a particular paper and you think, well, I don't know if that paper works, make sure that you're viewing the print in the kind of lighting where you're going to display the print because that makes a big difference as well. The type of lighting, the strength of lighting. So that's a shot that I rather like. It's got lots of fine detail. 
In fact, it's got so much fine detail in, because as I say, it's a 100 megapixel image. It's got so much fine detail in, I'd much rather print this one larger. This is the sort of image with the fine detail in it, this will work really well as a very big image. If you printed this on A4, it would look very busy. Um, certainly, uh, for my eyesight, unless I put stronger glasses on, um, I can't really view prints much closer than this in C-sharp detail. If I've got an A4 print, it's just going to be lost. But remember print size as well when you're choosing paper types. So there's the one that I produced. Now, the example of lots of different papers. This is a shot of the steps at Wells Cathedral. Now I use this shot a lot, both because I really like it. It's inspired by somebody who sort of got me thinking about architectural photography, the work of F.H. Heavens. I think this was 1908, 1905. I can't remember, never remember the precise date. But anyway, that particular shot, the very famous shot of this, is just of a small area of this, partly because uh, he didn't have the equivalent of the 17mm shift lens that I had when I took this particular picture. So this is my reinterpretation of the scene using a much bigger, wider lens. Now, that is probably my favourite version of it. It's on a smooth white cotton rag paper. The smoothness of it goes well with the soft old stone. Now, these are hundreds of years old, this stonework, so you want something that is sympathetic to that. If I was taking a shot, let's say, of a modernist uh, concrete building or something like that, would I still want the softness? Well, actually, they're old enough now that some people would say, yes, you should, but I'd be tempted more to go for something with just that little bit more contrast in it, something like a burrito or something like that. For for black and white though, I rarely ever want gloss. There are shots that I've done in black and white which work well in gloss, but it's not that common. Uh, here is a glossy version of that last picture. Now, it's, yeah, the contrast of it is slightly different, but there's just something about it that I just don't like that shiny finish. And it's the real bright gloss fine, shiny finish here. I should admit, these pictures here were not done on this printer. These particular pictures were printed on a Canon Pro 2000 when I tested it when it first came out a few years ago. Well, that was superseded by the virtually identical Pro 2100. And that has just been superseded by the brand new 2600, which I do hope to get to be able to test. So I'm going to be looking at these. These are some of my old Pro 2000 prints that I will be comparing with the 2600 when it comes because Canon are making quite a few claims, or that I should say Canon's marketing people are making quite a few claims over the new inks in the Canon. Are they any different really from a, you know, from a visible point of view? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But that's another printer to test. But certainly in this light, I can see there's, there's very little UV here because the, the sun's not in. And uh, this is uh, an LED bulb, so there's very little UV light here, I can still see that this gloss paper is a bright white and this is a warmer look to it. There's a distinct difference between them. Now, a subtle difference to between the one I've got here, the cotton rag picture, and one here. This is done on a smooth matte paper. It's very similar and if you didn't if I would be able to touch it like this, you probably wouldn't be able to spot much difference between them. And this is an ordinary matte art, a matte plain paper. This is a matte cotton rag art paper. This one does have a very little bit of texture. This is an absolutely smooth surface. This is a brighter white, but this one on the cotton rag has a slightly darker black to it. So between them, obviously we've said the glossy one, I'm not interested in that. But between these two here, well, if you can see any difference, I'd be astounded given, you know, we're looking at this on video. But from here, this slightly warmer paper gives a richer feel to this than the somewhat harsher white of this. It's quite a subtle difference. Yeah, you know, get some, you know, some papers if you can, even if you can only get a sample pack. One of the, I, I sometimes say, don't rush into getting sample packs because you end up not being able to decide between them. Sometimes printing a bit of an image on a sample pack 
can just give you that feel for what the differences are between different papers. So between these two here, you know, technically there's probably not much difference in the image, but when I look at it, this slightly warmer paper, ever so slight, the darkness is slightly better than this one here, that still gets it. Now, luster paper. In fact, looking at this one and the one underneath, these are both a metallic paper. Now, metallic papers have a number of different characteristics. They can be just great, very glossy papers, or you can get some that have this slight bluish purplish sheen. Now, I very much doubt, it may show in the video, I don't know for certain. If it does, well, that's good. But this does have a metallic sheen to it. It's great for some images, but I find it distracts. Uh, what I do notice with papers is that, and it's about images in general, is that if you find that the paper is making too much of an impact on the picture, take that perhaps as a hint that you're not quite as satisfied with the image as you could be. Now, this particular one that I started off with, this one here, yes, yeah, nice and nice image. There is still something about it that I'm not quite satisfied with. Um, could be why I've never printed this one black and white before. Could be all sorts of things. But I'm having difficulties thinking which paper looks like, or does the paper make much difference to it? And that just makes me think back, have I got the right image to be printing here? Now I've got others taken at the same time, slightly different angles and other things like that. So maybe that one works. This is one of the ones that I'd show one of the architects and see what they thought about it. And if they liked it, well, yeah, they could have it, but um, I generate an awful lot of prints like this. But you know, that's the print that I'm testing. But for this particular one here, because I really like the image, I'm not that strongly bothered by the differences in the paper. Uh, for that particular one there, the black and white one I showed just now, I think if I tried that on a brighter paper or something like that, it might have more punch in it. But that tells me, if I'm saying I'm using a brighter paper because I want an image with more punch in it, is that because there's something not quite right with my editing or the original image or something like that? So paper is the end result in your print but also paper can make you think about your original photography as well. So it's worthwhile looking at the different ways of going through stuff. So we've still got, this is my favorite. The two metallic ones here, actually I, the difference, and you will not be able to see this, is that one has the clear overcoat ink on it and one doesn't have the clear overcoat ink on it. Uh, there is a subtle difference if I shine the light and look at them close, I can see between the two. Um, once again, unless you knew what you were looking for, you wouldn't see it. Now a, a print which is much closer. This is printed on quite a heavy paper. This is printed on a brighter style paper. Now I've got a very dull gloss on this. This is a semi-gloss, semi-matte. And depending on what light I've got reflecting off the image, it looks a bit softer than this because of the uh, loss of contrast from light being reflected, but it has a very nice finish to it. There is, I'm still picking this one. Um, this is, you know, I, I've looked at these several times before, but, and which one, but we're getting close to a paper which I would choose for more images. And that's, you know, that's a cotton, cotton rag brighter type. Once again, an almost no texture on it. I looked at the Hanamula um, bamboo brighter recently for a big black and white print. And that had a really nice finish on it. Much more of a sheen than this one. Perhaps a little bit too much texture for some images. Um, I don't want to impose texture on an image like this, but you don't know. So that's good. That looks like just a slightly done. I have got written on the back of these various things. But so we've got the choice for this image is either an actual cotton rag paper of some sort or a brighter paper. 
and a barita on a cotton rag base. So those are, for this sort of image, are my favorite. But I said, what's my real favorite? Well, not necessarily that. It would just be a bigger version. Some images just work well when they're bigger images. So this is printed on, and I can feel the texture of it. This is out of very lightly textured cotton rag paper. It's another natural white one. The Barita papers here, they're natural white or very low optical brightener. Now that's for this. Would these, it, would these paper choices work for other architectural subjects? Newer buildings, modern buildings, would they work in color? It's all different on it. But for black and white, I'm coming down to saying, well, I don't want a gloss. I don't want luster. I want dull gloss or no gloss. And that's for these particular pictures. Now, it will vary for other pictures, but the key thing is if you get a chance, get some sample images. Um, if you're going to one of, the, I'll be going to the photography show in the UK next month and one of the things that the people doing papers, if they've got sample packs of images on papers, get a sample swatch pack off them of sample images. The images may not be ones you're interested in, but you're looking at the actual paper qualities, how it reflects light, how it looks in different lighting conditions, and frankly, whether you like it or not. So there you have a, a bit of, a, a, of an overview of some of my paper choices and the differences. But that thing about if you find paper choice becoming too important, think about what that says about the image itself. Much like I never use toning or tinting, or you know, virtually never, um, I've, I've not seen a toned or tinted image where I think the toning or tinting genuinely contributed to the image. Um, it made a better print maybe, but it was covering up perhaps some deficiencies in the print. Now, some people like toning and tinting, so they won't agree with that, but form your own opinions. Hope that's been of interest. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. Um, it, as I say, it was somebody's question at the talk I was doing at a camera club the other night that uh, made me think about doing this. So uh, thanks for watching and bye. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks.